Hello everyone, this is uh, Mike with the Blue Vintage, and I wanted to show off this uh, th this record player drive system. So we've got our motor, that's this guy right here. We've got a transmission, this is an actual oil-filled transmission that has a set of gears and a gear selector, low or high. Um, so it's a little bit stiff at the moment and doesn't want to move. There it goes. So low and high. And then over here, is a centripetally controlled braking mechanism. So let's uh, let's start back here. So we basically got a, a coil with a with a wrapped around a core that drives a a main drive shaft that passes through this whole assembly here. Now in the middle is our transmission, and I'll come to that in a second. But over here, and I want to show this to you. You can see those two weights on either side. It's um, if I can get my fingers in there. It's these two little guys right here that my finger's on. Those two weights spin apart and apply pressure to a pressure disc back in there. I'll let my camera focus, maybe. And I'm not going to focus. There it goes. Okay, so there's that pressure plate back there. Now that pressure plate can be controlled with this lever right here, driven by a cam. So you can see this moving as I turn this, presses out when I, just like that. You can see it moving. So this controls the speed. Now what's cool about this is that the motor is not speed controlled itself. The, the, the centripetally controlled braking system won't allow the, the main drive shaft to turn faster than what's necessary. So let's turn this on so you can see what's happening here. It'll be just a second. And turn the phono on. Okay, so now you can see that's turning. You can see the centripetally controlled, and let's, oops, wrong dial, that one. All right, you can see those weights come back together when I shut it off. When I turn it on, they spin back apart, and they spin, and then by changing braking pressure, I can control the speed. It's a completely mechanically controlled braking mechanism that drives, and then you've also got your, your drive shaft here that sets between, there's 33 RPM, and once I switch this back out, 78 RPM. Back at 33, and 78. So this is a mechanical, this is a mechanical gearbox, and a mechanical speed regulator uh, with brake that sets your, that sets your rotational speed. Because with a record player, the rotational speed matters as far as your pitch. So this whole drive shaft runs through the whole mechanism. You'll see when I open this up. So let's shut that off and disconnect this guy and pull the lid. And pull the lid. There it goes. It's a little bit stiff because the gear selector gets in the way. Now we just lost our, our main shaft here. This is your, your gear selector. And you can see that, that spline right there. That spline is what connects between the with the gear selector, and then you've got your shifting fork. That is this guy right here. Your shifting fork. This hooks around this this little odd guy right here and lifts and lowers to select between high and low gear. This spline then meets up like if I can find the little notch. There's a little notch. So the spline matches up with this guy here and then allows you to select between your low and your high gear. Here is your other gear. And so you've got your main shaft that, that passes through here. And then this is your high gear. And then your low gear is this one here that sits down in the oil. Now that is actually motor oil down there, this 10W30. When I got this, it was all locked up. It was frozen. So what I had to do is fill it with oil. I let it sit for a few days. And see, there's the other end. There's the, the whole gear shaft, the whole gear mechanism. And this whole thing was just locked. So what I had to do is fill it with motor oil, let it sit for a few days, and then I started cranking it. I took the motor off and started cranking on the main shaft until it freed up. And it, it took a while. It took, uh, it took about a few days of sitting and then a, a few, about 30 minutes or so of cranking on it before it completely freed up and the bearings were allowed to move again. And we are not in focus. 
so essentially, it's a transmission gear drive mechanism. Now it leaks a little bit, it leaks out the main shaft. The, the main shaft seals are bad and I'm going to have to replace those, see if I can't uh, get in there and replace those. But in the meantime, there you go. So I wanted to give a little bit more information on this transcription player. Uh, this is a Newcomb transcription player uh, from the 1940s. It uses the big octal style tubes um, and the, the drive itself was made by a General Industries company uh, out of Elyria, Ohio and it's called the Flyer Electric Motor. Uh, now these, these, these machines are no longer, this company is no, no longer around, Newcomb is no longer around um, and, and therefore hardware for these machines is no longer around either. So if you if you have a broken one, it's very difficult. At least a mechanically broken one, it's a very difficult thing to find replacements for. Um, the the building that that these motors were actually built in burned down. Oh uh, nine, I believe it was, based on my research. So th the building's no longer even there either. Uh, so these uh, these machines are, are really cool and a really cool relic of portable audio from back in the 1940s. Um, they're they're extremely modular. They're extremely easy to work on. Um, the the transcription player. I'll show you a little bit more of that later. Um, is there's these two little clasps that that are on the that are on the lid that you just take a screwdriver and pop them off, and the whole top lifts up and you can access the tubes and all all necessary hardware right there. Um, so it's a really brilliantly built design, although definitely no longer feasible for obvious reasons. We have electronic controls. We have, we don't need a mechanical braking system anymore. We don't need a physical transmission to gear between high and low anymore. We just, we don't need that anymore. So it's just a neat relic of, of years gone by, and, and I figured I'd want to show that to you. So Mike signing out.